All right, welcome back to Psalms. Today we are at Psalm 143. This is the last of the uh, penitential psalms. There's seven of them. Let um, me just list them since we've come to the end of them. We've got Psalm 6, Psalm 32, Psalm 38, Psalm 51. Of course, those two are David after uh, the Bathsheba incident. Then we've also got 102, 130, and this one, 143. So seven psalms expressing intense remorse for sin and pleading for God's mercy as a sinner. That's why it's called a penitential psalm. So here we have, hear my prayer, O Lord, give ear to my pleas for mercy. In your faithfulness, answer me. In your righteousness, enter not into judgment with your servant, for no one is living, sorry, no one living is righteous before you. This is a, a an important kind of insight, really, that the reality is God is perfect, we are not. And so I, therefore, uh, am certainly not, and I come before God totally dependent upon his mercy. It's purely his character that makes it possible for me to approach him, his grace, his love, whatever you want to call it. If it weren't for that characteristic about God, I could have no hope. I could I could not approach but because of who he is and because of what he's like, I therefore can and do approach him on the basis of mercy, on the basis of him not judging. Drop down uh, verses five and six. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all that you have done. I ponder the work of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Selah. And so it, there's this looking back, recognizing God's action, but it's in God's action that his character is communicated. So now let's look at the second half of the psalm in particular. What we're going to see here is a whole set of uh, petitions, requests of God, and they are based upon his character, based upon his mercy, his grace, his love and so on. Now, in the English, it's not always crystal clear, the the linkage between the lines, but I, I can hopefully help us see that. So answer me quickly, O Lord. Why? Because my spirit fails. There's kind of a, a missing four, if you like, there. Not missing, but not necessary. Answer me quickly, for my spirit fails. I'm dependent upon you answering. Hide not your face from me, lest I'd be like those who go down to the pit. That would be the natural consequence. But if God doesn't hide his face, then there's hope. Let me hear in the morning of your steadfast love, for in you I trust. Make me know the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord. Here's another implied for for I have fled to you for refuge. So every request that's being made is based upon the character of God, based upon faith, trust, dependence. There's no sense that God owes David, who's writing this. There's no sense that, that God is contractually obligated to do anything. Sometimes people pray to God almost like they're twisting his arm, almost like if they can say it the right way, then he'll have to answer. The reality is that we come to God absolutely hopeless in ourselves and all of our hope is on his side. All of our hope is in him. And so we come praying for mercy and for guidance and for help and for everything based on his character. Keep going here. Teach me to do your will for you are my God. And then we've got a statement without a, a because. Okay, this one here kind of breaks the pattern and then they get reversed uh, a little bit after that. So it's just a breaking up of the rhythm, but it's still the same principle. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. Even there, there's an implicit sense that it's based on his character, not on my deserving. O oh Lord, preserve my life for your name's sake. Okay, so it's reversed order here. For your name's sake, O oh Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring my soul out of trouble. There's another one. And in your steadfast love, you will cut out, uh, sorry, cut off my enemies and you will destroy all the adversaries of my soul. 
bottom line for I am your servant. And so even with the pattern kind of mixing a little bit as we go through it, the pattern is established. We come to God and we make our petitions to God and we pray to God based on his character, not because we deserve it. We deserve nothing but judgment, but based on his kindness, goodness, mercy and love, his righteousness, his steadfast love. That is all our hope. And so Psalm 143, I hope that you can read that, recognize in it your own stance or position before God, a hopeless sinner if it weren't for him. But because of who he is, we can boldly approach and bring our petitions to him, always recognizing that he doesn't owe us, but he will give to us because he's good. See you next time.